Hey everyone, welcome back to KC3D Sparks. Today we are going to be creating a bookshelf for this section over here. It'll be kind of like an office or maybe a library, that kind of thing for our next room. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop to another layer. And since this is an empty layer, um, you wanna make sure you do start with whatever you wanna work with. I'll be working in inches. And I did change the scale of my grid floor to quarter of an inch. First thing we wanna do is I'm going to do Shift A mesh and we're going to start with a cube now this cube is six inches a little big for what we want to use it for i want it to be about two inches tall but i'm going to be adding a lot to the top so we're just going to start with one and a half for the x we're just going to go ahead and start with one inch and for the y we will start with a quarter of an inch Think that should work and we'll thicken it up as we go so I'm gonna go ahead and tab into edit mode and I'm going to go to front view do control R add a loop here go ahead and deselect that with a Z for wireframe view B for border select X to delete those vertices go over here to this modifier tab add modifier mirror and we'll go ahead and check clipping to make sure it stays attached. And of course you can always grab it, make sure nothing comes apart. So I've already looked at some inspiration pictures for how I want my bookshelf to look. I mainly drew my inspiration from some Gothic style bookshelves. And then I just kind of put pieces together and to make my own. I'm gonna kind of go off of that for our dungeon. So it kind of has like an eerie feel. So after we get our basic box here, we're gonna start setting up some of our topology. So I'm gonna go ahead and do control R and go about right here. So maybe about where there's a quarter left of this grid square, a little less probably, but there's good. We'll do control R again to create that. And I wanna go ahead, grab these, and we'll just go ahead and do E to extrude, pull that up, maybe about there not quite half and then i want to do one two three shelves so i just did control r and scrolled up twice and then i want to do control r again to make sure we have the other loop now for the sides i want to go ahead and do control r and bring that forward, maybe about there. Maybe a little bit further back. Because we'll branch that out. To start, we're gonna go ahead and switch to face select. We're gonna grab all of these on the edge and grab the top and bottom. And we'll also grab this whole side and the top. So it's a little bit of an odd selection, but you'll see in a minute why we want to do it this way. So we're going to hit E to extrude and just hit escape so it stays where it is. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out a little bit. And then for the front ones, I'm going to reselect those and pull them out. Like that. And we'll fix up those in a second and make those go back to even. But for the side, we're gonna go ahead and reselect these. And we're gonna hit E to extrude and pull that out. And I want that to be maybe about here. And then from there, I we'll wanna go ahead and do Control R and do one loop here. And I'll make that a little bit similar to that. Now for this, I wanna go ahead and line this back up with that edge. So I'm gonna to go to here, just go ahead and alt right click that and grab the rest of it and pull that back over. So you can tell it's not quite lined up perfectly. That's why it's like a little extra bold. So what I'm gonna do is do B for border select, grab all of them, do S, X, zero to line that up perfectly. There we go, that's much better. So now, go ahead and switch to face select, and we will grab, oops, not that one, 
all of these where we want the holes or the inset for our shelves to be. So we're going to go into side view, hit E to extrude, hit Z to go into wireframe view, and I'm going to bring those back. Now these I'll go ahead and deselect because they're back far enough, but I want these to obviously match up. Perfect. So right, as, right when you can see just the orange dot of the origin of the face, you know it's good. No more orange lines. So they are matched up perfectly. So you can see the start of our shelves. Perfect. So now we can add in some detail. First thing I want to do is add the detail to the top. To do that, we already have kind of like our base. So I'm going to grab this face and this face, go into front view, hit E to extrude, and just hit escape. I'm going to go ahead and just pull that up to maybe about there. Deselect that. I'm going to switch back to vertex select mode. Go into wireframe view. Yeah, grab these and pull them down and rotate until we get a nice triangle, just like that. So next, we'll want to go ahead and do a similar thing to the center, except I'm going to do control R and add a loop here, maybe a little bit wider, maybe more about there. So not quite in the center of this grid, maybe a little bit more to the left. And again, grab these faces, but I'm going to leave these two alone for now. Go into front view, hit E to extrude. I'm going to pull that to the top of this grid. And if you want it to be exact while you're pulling, you can, of course, hit control so it snaps to that grid line perfectly. And then I'm just going to go ahead and grab these two faces, go back into front view, and go ahead and rotate it so it works is another perfect triangle. It's a little sloped. There we go. So next, I'll go ahead and grab these two faces. We're just going to hit E to extrude, hit escape, and I'm going to size those in. You'll notice since the mirror modifier is on, the X and the Y don't size properly. So you'll want to make sure you pay attention to that. We also I'm going to bring this forward and size along the Y to be more like that. Then go back into front view, hit E to extrude again, pull that up, starting to create a base right there. And actually, it's not as box like, it's definitely more rectangular. So I'm going to push this in to be more about there. E to extrude again, size that in, and again, make sure the X is sizing along with the Y evenly, or as evenly as you can get it. E to extrude, do a smaller base there. E to extrude, size that in. E to extrude, pull that up. E to extrude, size that out, pull it up a little bit. E to extrude, pull that out, size that in. You're not quite that far yet. E to extrude, pull that up, do Alt M at center. Except you'll notice it creates two different points that are separate. That's because of our mirror modifier. So what you'll want to do is just switch to vertex select mode, grab that vertice and just push that in and it will attach. Perfect. Alrighty. So now I'm going to go ahead and go over here to do a subdivision surface modifier. I usually like to crank it up to three, but personal preference. And now I'm going to sharpen a lot of this. So I'm going to deselect the top, go into wireframe view, and basically start going crazy with sharpen. So I'm just going to grab what I want, hit shift E, and start making these um, sharp. So I'm going to grab all of this, shift E, sharpen that back, grab the front. 
um, but I don't want this edge here to be sharp. So if there's anything extra you're noticing, make sure you just deselect that so you can get that properly. I do want this edge to be sharp and actually wouldn't mind this and this to be sharp as well as the top. And I want this to have more of a curve to it. So I'm going to do control R on both of these and just leave them in the center. And then we're going to grab these edges here, go into the front view and pull that in. You can make it as dramatic as you want, but I'm probably going to do right about there. So we get kind of like that curve going on instead. Now for the bookshelves themselves, I definitely want those to be sharp. So I'm going to grab all of those. Shift E. And what might even be easier is grab all of this. And then I don't want the fronts of these. So we'll go ahead and deselect those. Uh, I don't want that sharpened. Just like that. You'll notice there's kind of a little bit of oddness here. So maybe I will go ahead and sharpen this. Okay, that helps with that. We'll definitely want to grab here. Oh, and we forgot the corner. Uh, maybe I don't want that completely sharp though. So we'll just do that. Eh, yeah, I want it all the way sharp. Um, And then I wanted this to be kind of out and over the columns themselves. So what I also want to do is grab these and we're going to hit E to extrude and pull that out actually a little bit extra to kind of give it a little bit more decoration. So I want to go ahead and sharpen that. And we might need to sharpen this edge as well. That looks better. And oh, forgot to sharpen the base here as well as this base. Just like that. And if you wanted, you could even add a footer just like the top. So maybe grab this, do E to extrude and pull that out just slightly. That looks good. And of course, we'll have to sharpen a lot of these to make sure they are working properly. So I'm going to switch to vertex select mode. Grab these two. And grab all of these. Um, and I might even want this one as well. Perfect. And also, if you wanted to have this match, you could always extrude this side. I kind of want that part to be flat, though, I think. Mm, let's see how it would look, actually. So if we wanted it to match, we could grab all of this. E to extrude. Pull that out. And you would probably want to unsharpen it so it goes round again. But sharpen the top and the bottom face. That actually looks pretty cool. Um, and then to even create kind of like a topper, you could E to extrude, pull that up and size that in and actually unsharpen that. And then you might want to unsharpen this loop as well. But maybe not all the way, maybe something more like that. And sharpen this edge completely. Let's give it a little bit more different variations. Of course, most Gothic styles like this have a lot of intricate inlays of decorations. Um, for 3D printing though, you most likely won't get those uh, pretty reliefs essentially in here. Of course, you could always model it 
and see if it'll print out. I'm not going to though because I know the printer that I have is not going to print out tiny intricate details like that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it and probably just paint in, hopefully, we'll see about my painting skills, um, <laughs> some additional details there. So uh, I want to go ahead and move this to our first layer and check this out. You can definitely see it's below the floor right now and in a very different spot than we want it to be. So let's go ahead and grab that, go into front view, grab it again, pull it up, and kind of focus in on it. So grab that, I'm gonna go into side view, line it up with the floor. So right about there. I'm gonna go into top view because I'm gonna line it up against this wall for now. So rotate, so R90, and then it's backwards, so I'm just going to hit the minus sign, enter, and push that back against the wall. A center between these two squares. And that actually looks really good. Um, it's a little bit thinner than I think I would actually want it. So let's go ahead and increase the width. So let's do SX and size that up. See more like that. So it's a nice size books, book shelf, <laughs> bookcase, bookshelf. That looks much better. I like it like that a lot more. Um, but now this thing looks a little dinky. So I might even tab in, border select all of these. Might have to go into wireframe view. And make sure nothing else is selected, which I don't think there. Oh, yep, there is. So make sure you deselect anything extra. I'm going to go into top view and make it a little bit more square again but then i'm just gonna size everything up and it definitely went that way but now you can see after we size it up it kind of sunk in so we want to make sure that it gets level again there we go so it looks a little oversized but again since it's being printed it's probably a little bit better I think I want to increase the size again, but not along the Z axis. So I'm going to do S shift Z to just kind of like draw it out a little bit more. And then I might even bring these up a little bit to make sure they do come through once it's printed. There we go. So once you're happy with your model, of course, just go ahead and apply your modifiers. Typically, I like to duplicate it first. And for right now, because I can't tell some of the in here looks a little bit off so I'm gonna tab back into edit mode select everything under mesh display you can go ahead and select this so you can see the normals which it does look like they are all facing the correct way so if the shading ever looks off you can always check the normals to make sure sure that they're facing uh, the correct way but of course you can always go to space bar start typing in normals and hit make normals consistent nothing changed so that's just probably my eyes playing tricks on me no worries there but if you guys have any questions or requests or anything like that go ahead and hit me up in the comments below um next week i will go ahead and make a bunch of clutter for these bookshelves so i want to make some actual books some scrolls maybe some potion bottles and all kinds of things to fill these shelves up so stay tuned for next week's video so we can actually keep working with these and populate the shelves with a ton of stuff. If you have any requests for what you'd want to see on the shelves as well, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you guys next week.